Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run through the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days. So we've got a lot of up and down temperatures and up and down precipitation as well. There's going to be bouts of heavier widespread precipitation but also times of drier weather and that is the sort of theme over the next couple of weeks. Still generally quite unsettled but into the longer term down day seven, day ten we do still have to see more amplification amplification in the jet streams that not only could turn us cooler and more unsettled but also could turn us more settled and warmer or depending on where the jet stream ends up um, and as we alluded to a couple of days ago that there is potential for a bit of an Indian summer type pattern but then there is also the potential for something a little bit colder and more unsettled or depends as I said where those kinks in the jet stream line up and at the moment they are still uh, a little bit uncertain depending on which model we have a look at. We'll also have a look at the ensembles, look at the longer range, see what they're showing over the next few weeks for upper air temperatures and precipitation as we do start to have a look towards the end of this month and into the start of November. And as we alluded to in our first winter look ahead yesterday, there's definitely a signal for early winter and late autumn to have more higher pressure domination and potentially some blocking causing cooler air from the north. So that is something we need to keep an eye on in the longer range. Again, it's nothing to worry about now, but in the extended range of some of these runs within the next sort of couple of weeks, we should start to see those hints perhaps, and maybe even seeing some of those hints today. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So if we do start on the live radar, you can see we've got a rain band pushing through the south and east at the moment. Of course, it's around mid-morning, so some of you watching this is probably cleared out towards Europe, but, but it did bring some sharp, heavier rain from northwest England out to southeast England over the course of uh, the night, last night into the morning. Uh, but as I said, it should clear for most by around lunchtime. A few showers in the north pushing in from a westerly flow. Again, these could be heavy where they do fall, but they should be coming under a blustery wind, so it should move through quite quickly. And elsewhere, it shouldn't be too bad. This is one of those sort of perfect scenarios where we all do see some heavy rain, but it falls overnight, so not really impacting anyone's day too much. So yeah, not too bad at all. And as I'm recording this uh, in the mid-morning, as I said, the temperatures are going to be pretty chilly. You can see further northwards and westwards under the slightly cooler air mass under uh, or behind that cold front sweeping through the south and east temperatures widely in the mid single digits further south and eastwards back, back towards maybe slightly above double digits maybe around 10 to 12 degrees right on that south and southeast corner um, as we are in slightly milder air still as that weather front still hasn't completely cleared through if we do now go over to the UKV and have a look at those precipitation charts for the next five days, again you can see that precipitation heading away by, uh, from the southeast this morning and into this afternoon you can see a lot of sunshine and showers in the north and the west. But elsewhere, most of England, Wales, uh, parts of eastern Scotland, Royal Ireland and a lot of northern Ireland are going to be reasonably dry, sunny and not too bad, but could be quite a chilly feel because of, these, uh, of the colder air mass we're in. Beyond that, you can see clouds starting to appear from the west. This is signs of another weather front appearing. You can start to see the precipitation pushing in. And initially, if you choose that, just heavier precipitation pushing into parts of Scotland, Republic of Ireland, and Northern Ireland. But I expected that weather front will eventually slowly sweep eastwards again, disintegrating as it does, but could give a bit of precipitation widely in places. Into Thursday, another rain band pushes in. And you can see there's quite heavy rain and some of that rain uh, falling in the south as well, quite distinctly. Uh, some very heavy widespread rain in the south through Thursday afternoon. That could be quite miserable there. Eventually clearing through and then we all go into an unsettled westerly flow with some chilly conditions coming in from the north and the west. Again, look at those upper air temperatures, quite cold air actually pushing in for the end of this working week into the weekend. Uh, and yeah, that's not going to feel all too great. Quite a cold wind chill there uh, and a lot of blustery showers and those temperatures on the moment won't be particularly high either because of those cold upper air temperatures. 
If we do now go over to those surface temperatures and see what they are showing over the next five days. Now you can see this afternoon we are not particularly mild, but struggling to around 13 to 15 degrees, but the isolated 16 degrees. Again, all of us are in that cold rare mass this afternoon, but it isn't ridiculously cold, so not expecting anything too crazy. Into tonight, you see temperatures widely in the mid-single digits, because of course, with the cold rare mass, we're going to see those temperatures fall slightly colder overnight. And into Wednesday, uh, sorry, Tuesday afternoon, you can see those temperatures are around that 13 to 15 degree mark, so still not particularly great but not crazy cold either in uh, into early hours of wednesday again mid single digits and by wednesday afternoon temperatures rising maybe 16 or 17 degrees with a slight bump of milder air but that's going to fuel the rain through the end of the week this is slightly milder air mass and you can see through thursday cold in the north but by thursday afternoon you can see still considerably chillier but you see off the coast it's still mild because we've got a mild wedge of air that's fueling any precipitation bands through thursday afternoon so in land under the precipitation it's going to feel pretty cold but it's actually being fueled by slightly milder air and eventually into friday afternoon you can see hanging on perhaps to some milder air in the south and the east but further north and westwards mid to low single digits in places and you can see that overnight into saturday dropping quite low at 3 a.m widely sort of five to nine degrees quite cold indeed i'm expecting saturday to be a chilly feeling day as well because of those cold upper air temperatures and that westerly uh, cold polar maritime air mass pushing in if you now go over to the GFS and see what that's showing over the next couple of weeks. Um, again, you can see a westerly flow at the moment and continuing all the way into this weekend, but we do see a plunge of cold air by the weekend because we've got some blocking up towards Greenland, so a bit of amplification in the jet stream that we have been alluding to. Now, it really is interesting to see what happens after this because some of the runs push that low out into the north atlantic drop a southerly warm flow others keep it over the top of us bringing a colder flow now the gfs temporarily brings up a southerly wind slightly milder air but not mild enough and prolonged enough to give us any warm weather but could just fuel rain bands for eventually we go cold again with another northerly flow uh, before eventually going back westerly so we do run that back and actually have a look at the raw upper air temperatures. Again, you can see cold by the end of this week into the weekend, but then we'll get eventually a milder push of air, for perhaps a 15 degree temperature change at 850 HPA there. Uh, but again, that could just fuel big precipitation for eventually we see another northerly flow and see colder air pushing back in. So not quite going for an Indian summer pattern. It, it kind of shows it, but that blocking doesn't hold. And eventually northerly winds do win out. Because uh, again, we're on a sort of knife edge here when we have this sort of blocking with the Greenland block or Icelandic higher pressure system. We always get this bit of uncertainty, whether we're going to drop a southerly wind or a northerly wind. If we do have a look at the potential equivalent temperatures as well, this shows us the air mass is even better. You can see cold blues for eventually a slight wedge of yellows there and, and along that boundary could be some very heavy rain for eventually we are pushed back into the blues with a very cold air mass for the end of the week uh, or end of the run sorry uh, and eventually going to more of a westerly flow sort of in between air masses there so you can see the potential is there for cold weather and mild weather but from the gfs today that mild weather probably won't actually improve the temperatures all too much but could increase the chances of some very heavy precipitation considerably uh, but keep us generally around average or below average but that's not what every run is showing. Uh, and if we go to the GM and see how that compares, again, westerly flow over the next few days. Uh, that low pressure just plunges across to our south, and then we see that southerly flow, but the high pressure extends over the top of us. And we've got a direct southerly with higher pressure. This would be very warm and dry, Indian summer type pattern. And look at that 15 degree isotherm potentially nudging into the far south. That would be incredibly warm um, and dry under that higher pressure. And again, you look at the temperature deviation, look at that 10 to 12 degrees above average. That would be very warm. Temperatures would be widely into the 20s, maybe even mid 20s in a few localized areas, maybe 25 degrees, as I said. So, yeah, very, very interesting. Awful and very similar pattern, but it just depends whether that high pressure does top or build into once it gets nudged out of Greenland. So, yeah, very, very interesting today. And this is why I said it's a very similar pattern. Both runs have got amplification in the jet stream, at least initially, but it's all where that low goes. Does it plunge into the North Atlantic, bring up a southerly wind, or just, just sit in the Atlantic, milder air for a time, 
for bringing a northerly wind back in. If you compare it to the ECMWF, see what that is showing. Again, a westerly flow at the moment, staying considerably unsettled. Eventually that low plunges it out to the Atlantic. It could be some very stormy systems spiralling around there where that cold air engages with milder Atlantic air. And we do see sort of in between, we do see a southerly wind. Northerly wind doesn't replace it, but we're much closer to the low, which means it's more likely to be unsettled, but mild and humid. So... Yeah, very interesting seeing that. And again, running back to the upper air temperatures, you see initially in around five, six days' time, we're in a cold polar maritime air mass, but eventually we bring up sort of the 10 degree isotherm, much milder air. The Far East could get up towards 20 degrees, but further westwards, where we're still in a very mild air mass above average, close to lower pressure, could actually be quite unsettled. Quite a bit of heavy rain, that humid, milder air from the south could actually fuel big, big weather fronts, uh, for eventually we just sit under the lower pressure. You can see the big temperature clashes to our north. And that's tip pretty typical this time of year. And that's why we do we can get quite stormy weather where these two air masses engage um, and spin up. But for the time being, it looks like from the ECMWF at least, we will be having milder air winning out. And again, if we run it back and have a look at the temperature deviation, you can see this very well emphasised. Very warm air for the far east, but cold air filling in from the other side into the low. And that does fuel it and spin it up perhaps. Now, if we do finish the video, but have a look at the ensembles from the GFS firstly. You can see generally over the next sort of week or so, we're average to below average. Quite considerably cold by the end of this week, but it's that uncertainty towards the start of next week, whether we stay cold under lower pressure or go very mild and warm. And if we do go very mild and warm, will it be under higher pressure? Um, we'll have to see, but you can see a big, big ensemble spread. Some ensemble members going up towards 15 degrees at 50 HP, others hanging around average, others well below average and in the longer term still quite considerable spread spread but the big uh, big consistency here is that it does look likely to be average to above average precipitation or quite a bit of precipitation at least over the next uh, couple of weeks at least starting by the end of this working week uh, with a lot of precipitation spikes appearing again they most likely will converge on a few dates uh, a few timings but uh, we have got quite a bit of precipitation showing up here and again if we compare it to the ECMWF ensemble we'll see what they're showing uh, they haven't fully gone out today but you can see the next eight days we're generally around average to below average and right towards the start of next week into the middle of next week you can see there are definitely a trend for above average but still high precipitation perhaps that was pattern of warmer air mass but low pressure sat over the top of us it is looking likely perhaps from these ensemble members today so again, it is something we need to keep an eye on. Still potential for an Indian summer type pattern, still potential for it to stay just cold entirely, but perhaps the most likely scenario is something in the middle, where it's not only um, a mild air gets pushed in, but it actually stays still quite unsettled. So I don't think that would be a pattern that actually really no one particularly wants, because that mild air, as I said, will probably actually fuel the lower pressure, making it even uh, heavier in terms of precipitation so yeah we'll have to see what happens over the next couple of weeks but still interesting patterns appearing and all eyes now are going to be over the next few weeks as we start to head into november where there's potential really for the start of winter at least in terms of cold weather and potentially some winteriness especially towards the second half of the month as uh, looking at that winter look ahead we had we did yesterday there is the potential there so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again Another video soon.